AFR On Demand is brought to you by Breck Golf. Try Beaver Creek today, just 20 minutes from downtown Baton Rouge in the Zachary area. They've got a PGA Tour driving range, a short game practice area, 30 to 40 yard practice shots. It's a great place to chip and putt and practice if you don't have time for a full round. Book your tee time today, golf.breck.org, golf.breck.org. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. <laughs> Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. That's And off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Pluckers. I'm Matt. This is Shaq O'Neal, and I hate Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Mm, you so. And Mr. Toby Tom Blake. We're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Oh, by the way, it's a hump day. Yep. It's hump day. Let's hump, everybody. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? A lot of LSU guys just got richer. Hump day. Pro day. It's hump day. Football players doing non-football things to elevate their football draft stock. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Hump day. How fast do you run in your underwear? It's hump day. How high can you jump? Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? How many times can you bench press 225, although there's no practical application of that in football whatsoever? Hump day. Nonetheless, if you do those things well... It's hump day. With the entire NFL watching. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Ding, ding. Hump day. LSU baseball gets a win. It's hump day. Hells lose. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? We're recapping all of it. Then uh, one hour from right now, Gio Paez will be here. New LSU football commitment defensive lineman transfer from Wisconsin. That's coming up to start hour number two. Uh, let's get going here. We're glad to have you aboard with us here. A ton to do. Let us begin as we do every single day. It's time to pop the top on another edition of AFR with Bud Light. Drink easy. All right, as we mentioned, um, it is Pro Day out at LSU, and I guess of note, there's really two things that most everyone, I would assume, was looking for. One um, was Jaden Daniels. So Jaden Daniels was set to throw. It was about a 50, a scripted uh, 50 pass practice that he was going through, and by all accounts, Jaden Daniels had a really good day. Actually, as a matter of fact, as I look up at uh, our monitor and studio, there's Lewis Riddick from the LSU Indoor on ESPN right now, NFL Live, talking about Jaden Daniels' day. Of course, the Heisman Trophy winner, the most effective and efficient downfield passer in all of college football. And uh, Jaden Daniels, after his workout, visited with the NFL Network and talked about what he wanted to show today in his pro day. Consistency off platform within the pocket. Um, that I'm able to get my feet underneath me. I um, still make the throws consistently. You know, same spiral, same trajectory. And the ball's not dying on me or, or stuff like that. So, uh, you know, that's the biggest thing I've been working on. So, uh, look, Jaden was awesome at that all year, and uh, this was really his day to shine. Didn't throw at the combine, as we all know. So, for um, for Jaden Daniels to have the opportunity to go out there with every team present, uh, we learned that Jaden Daniels did have dinner. Uh, last night with uh, a couple of teams in attendance, as did Malik Neighbors. So you're starting to see where these guys are going to land. Now, as much as everybody wanted to see Jaden Daniels, and understandably, it was, in fact, Malik Neighbors who stole the show. Malik Neighbors ran a 4-3-5 at Pro Day. His vertical was 42 inches, and his broad jump was 10 feet 9 inches. As Field Yates said after the workout, Malik Neighbors is the most explosive player in the 2024 NFL draft. Uh, There is no doubt whatsoever that Malik Neighbors has solidified himself 
as a top 10 pick in this year's and uh, next month's NFL draft. He was flying today uh, with the 40. And I, I don't know why it's necessarily straight line speed in the 40 is something that NFL teams just salivate over, but they do. And Malik Neighbors aced that test today. Look by contrast. Actually, can you pull that back up, Paulie? The funny part about the video, if you saw it, is after Malik finished his 40, that's Jaden Daniels who ran about 40 yards and, and met Malik around the goal line and was chest bumping him. And um, I would love to see whatever camera crew it was that came with the with the boom mic and held it over and what exactly they were saying, how that all uh, came about. But what a day for Malik Neighbors and Jaden Daniels in particular. Uh, uh, Omar Spates uh, repped out 30 times at 225, had a really nice day as well. So pull for all these uh, these LSU guys who, uh, by all accounts, had a good day with uh, every team from the NFL present. Okay, uh, it is after further review. We're glad to have you aboard with us. Our show open every day is brought to you by Bud Light. Drink easy in Louisiana with the great taste of Bud Light. Uh, the official beer of AFR, the official beer of the Tigers. As we continue to remind you, I forgot my stuff right there. There we go. Um, the uh, the you could still find the collector's edition national championship aluminum bottles at great retailers. So I tell you, look, you want to get the women's basketball national championship is the first time ever that Anheuser Busch has done a women's basketball uh, exclusive can like this or aluminum bottle. You can find them. So get around town if you do see them displayed. I tell you, man, grab a case as a collector's item and then grab a few or however many you want to drink. It's Bud Light. Drink easy with the Tigers and the champs. Bud Light, the official beer of AFR. Um, LSU baseball got a win on uh, on Tuesday night against Southeastern. So a real quick turnaround for the Tigers. They, they win last night at the box. They're traveling today to Arkansas, and then they'll play tomorrow. Several years ago, the, um, the SEC did this uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday uh, weekend series for the league on, on Easter weekend so as not to um, have, have the teams playing on Easter Sunday, which is a, a good thing to do, I think, by the league. So LSU has one fewer day, though, to get ready for for Arkansas and to go face Hagen Smith, who's the best pitcher in the SEC and arguably the best pitcher in college baseball. So that, that certainly is going to be a challenge, a massive challenge for LSU trying to get going offensively for an offense that has struggled to try to get going against the best pitching staff in, in, uh, in the SEC. But... Um, Jay Johnson uh, talked about the win over Southeastern and um, and what he saw from his team. It's good to win a game against a team that's playing well, 17 wins, and to accomplish a lot of things while we're doing it that's going to make us better. Like That's that's the ideal night. I'll, I'll give you a few uh, quick takeaways, and we'll circle back a little bit later on the show and come, come to all, all the things I saw. Um, I think everybody was most curious to see what this how this day would go offensively. For uh, for LSU because Jay Johnson he continues to shake up the lineup and it's very evident that as we've talked about here for the past couple of weeks you've got two very distinct paths you can either rely on your pitching and go with your best defensive lineup or you could try to inject more offense into the lineup and in so doing compromise yourself defensively a bit. And it's very clear, Jay Johnson, who is an offensive-minded coach, uh, is going with offense. Uh, Ethan Fry was in the lineup at DH. Brady uh, Neal was in right field. Um, we saw uh, Hayden Travinsky behind the plate. Uh, Mac Bingham went to center. Pearson was in left. So it was a very intentional effort to get these, uh, these offensive players into the lineup. Now, my contention coming out of the weekend, and we said it here on Monday. If you weren't here, I'll say it again. I think one of the problems LSU has offensively right now is Jay Johnson is asking role players to be star players. Guys like like Mac Bingham is a really good college baseball player. I mean, he's been in college for a long time. Um, but he's a role player. And I don't want a role player leading off for me. By contrast, Dylan Cruz was your leadoff hitter a year ago. Mac Bingham's a very good college baseball player. He, he homered last night. But he's not going to be the guy that's going to be the table setter at the top of your lineup. You move Mac Bingham down to the seven hole last night, and he goes three for three. Michael Braswell, another guy that's never going to be a star offensive player for you. What you want out of him in the bottom third of the order is, man, hit behind the runners, advance the runners, put the ball in play, put some pressure on the defense, draw a walk. Like He can do that out of the eight hole. Steven Milam, last night, batting ninth. At a three for four day. Like those guys, when you take the pressure off of them, put them in the bottom third of the lineup, I like them a lot. I don't like them so much when you're asking them to be the table setters for Tommy White 
and Jared Jones and your run producers. That's where this team is struggling right now. Who are the guys that are going to get on base to allow the run producers behind them to come up so you don't have a day where you hit three homers, but it's three solo homers? That's really where this team offensively is, is challenging. So Ethan Fry led off for LSU last night, went 0 for 4 with a strikeout. Um, I think he's got plenty of, he has plenty of ability. We're going to have to see more of that manifest. This is a tough ask to hope that it all comes together on the road in Fayetteville against Arkansas, but that's the task that LSU has this weekend. It's going to get harder before it gets easier with uh, Arkansas, Vandy, Tennessee before it starts to lighten up a smidge. Okay, uh, it's after further review. We're glad to have you hanging out with us here. We're brought to you by Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, lmfj.com, lmfj.com for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. For more than 40 years, they've been up in Baton Rouge and all of Louisiana. Get engaged. Gentlemen, if you're thinking of popping the question, go where our state has gone for nearly half a century. Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, where you always get the Lee Michaels experience, where they'll never, where they'll never ever make you feel less than when you walk in. It's an experience when you walk into Lee Michaels, where they'll give you chocolates and something cold to drink, and you'll feel like you're doing something special. Because you are. It's a diamond that's going to be in your family, hopefully for forever. You'll pass it on to your daughter at some point. It's Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Thrill her with a gift in the red box. LMFJ.com for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Okay, y'all, uh, it's after further review. Glad you're with us. In about 48 minutes, Gio Paez is going to be here. Gio is uh, the newest LSU football transfer commitment out of Wisconsin. He's a sixth-year college football player, one-year of eligibility remaining. He's transferring in to join LSU's defensive line, and Lord knows LSU needs bodies on the defensive line, and they got a really veteran one. So Gio Paez is going to be with us at the top of hour two. We'll talk some Pels with Jake Madison next hour as well. Pluckers trivia, ton to do. Glad you're here. It's AFR. AFR. Get Gordon, get it done. Gordon McKernan, injury attorneys. If you've been injured in an accident, it's not your fault. You know what to do. Do what injured people in our state have done for 30 years. Go to getgordon.com. We tell you all the time about the G team, the great stuff that Gordon's doing with uh, tons of uh, Tiger athletes. Of course, the entire women's basketball team. We had Aaliyah Armstrong in studio with us. Uh, Squirrel Burl, the uh, sprinter for LSU. Great uh, great uh, content on social if you want to check it out. They also uh, had to sit down with Jordan Wright from the LSU men's basketball team last week. That's up on social media if you want to check it out as well. It's great opportunities for a lot of athletes in the non-revenue sports as well. You know, football and certainly men's basketball as well. Get, get tons of publicity and attention and promotion. And these NIL opportunities have been, a great, uh, have been great for these young men and women. So many of them you've had the opportunity to meet as they've come in studio with us here. Of course, you can learn more about the G team at gordongives.com. That's gordongives.com. Or you can always go to getgordon.com. If you've been injured in an accident, it's not your fault. Do what uh, injured people have done in our state for more than 30 years. Get to Gordon and get it done. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. See where you stand on the leaderboard for the Million Dollar Bracket Challenge, powered by Acura of Baton Rouge and Coors Light at 1045ESPN.com. First place wins $2,024 cash. Second place gets a 75-inch TV and soundbar. Third place, two-night stay at the Beau Rivage. It's the Million Dollar Bracket Challenge, powered by Acura of Baton Rouge and Coors Light. Hey, Muse. Hey, Scone. How's your bracket? I mean... I don't care! Then why'd you ask? Just so I could set you up to say is I don't that, care. Is that like one of the, like the rock? It doesn't matter what yes. how your yes. bracket is. Yes. There we go. Yeah. It doesn't matter. How yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what that was. You were supposed to get like a million dollars in this thing if your bracket was perfect, but I guess we've given up on that. So uh, real talk, <laughs> just for those who maybe wonder how that works. So that's part of a national competition, right? So there's like a collective of radio stations that can participate in this prize giveaway. So that million dollar thing is part of a national deal. The other part, which is more realistic, is the one is our part of it, which is if you win, you what, tell me it again. Uh, first place, $2,024 $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, cash, yeah. 2024. Like yeah. that's, that's, that's our prize. Yes. So like whoever wins, you're get, whether you're perfect or not, like you win our bracket challenge, you're getting $2,024. And then second place, seventy-five inch TV and is, sound bar. That's that's all of our stuff, right? Third place is two nights is, stay at the boat. At the boat, good stuff. 
Yeah. Really good prizes. The, hey, you have to have a, a perfect bracket. And then if your bracket's perfect, then you got to make a 50-foot putt in the wind. And if you nail it, then you're entered into a drawing to potentially win a million dollars. We need to step up the third place thing and let them stay in Otter Suite at the bow. That, or, or maybe we can just make that like second place, like stay in Otter Suite at the Bow. Stay, I'm going to stay with the Otter. Like, oh, that's a weekend dangerous. at the Bow with the Otter. All right. Uh, but thanks to everybody who's participating. I don't, I, I'm not assuming anybody is in contention to win the million dollars from our bracket challenge. I don't think so. But to everyone who's still in contention, good luck. We did used to have a last place prize as well, which was great. It was like food for a month at walk ons. Uh, and so you had people who knew they weren't going to win, so they tried intentionally to lose. But the crazy thing is even when people were trying to lose, like if you went and picked every under, like you picked the longest of long shots, all you picked all for the four 16s in the final four, like you're still going to win games. It was crazy. Like even when you're actively trying to lose, people would still win games. Yeah. I just know I'm going to beat Mama Scone this year because she had St. Mary's winning the next. Hey, man, that's, that's, that was a tough one for Mama Scone. Didn't go great for Mama Scone this year. All right. Um, Dennis Allen met with reporters at the NFL meetings on Tuesday, and the big newsy thing out of that was the Ryan Ramchick conversation. So we spent a lot of time on that on Tuesday because for very obvious reasons. I mean, it's a former All-Pro offensive lineman whose career is in jeopardy. I mean, that, that was the most newsworthy thing to come out of that. So we spent our time there yesterday. But Dennis Allen covered a lot of ground, and where my what, what sort of attracted my attention from from DA's comments, was a lot about the defensive front seven, in particular Chase Young and signing Willie Gay and what you might expect from Isaiah Foskey in year two. Because as you look at the Saints defensively, and of course that's Dennis Allen's forte, and we know this team has a lot of issues. man. They're, I don't know that I could look at any position group and say, yeah, they're set there. Like We know Derek Carr is going to be the quarterback, but I don't think anybody's super pumped about it. I feel like you have two really good receivers and... Chris Olave and Rashid Shahid, but you certainly don't have depth there. Uh, tight end is very much in question. Offensive line is the worst unit on the team. Um, interior defensive line, you know, you got some production out of your free agents signings from a year ago with Shepard and Saunders, but your defensive end position, I mean, you were one of the you were bottom five in the NFL in sacks this year. I think you feel really good about your first two linebackers, but you have no depth after that. We've talked plenty about corner, and, and obviously now you don't have Marcus. Maybe there's nowhere on the field. Where you go, yep, set. So I think throughout this offseason, a lot of what we're going to do is explore those position groups and what way they try to fortify them. We've talked plenty about how, how I think they should go in the draft with offensive line, but Dennis Allen spent a good time on Tuesday talking about the defensive line, and most notably, of course, is signing Chase Young, the former number two overall pick. Look, I don't know that I really knew that he was going to be available. And then we quickly found out that, you know, he was going to be available and he was going to be in a range that we felt like, you know, we, we could get to. I think he's extremely talented. I think he's extremely motivated. We had a great visit with him, had dinner with him the night before, then brought him over, obviously did all the medical. And I just think he's going to be a really good asset, you know, for our defense. So the the big question, obviously, is, is the neck, right? I, I think there is nobody... None of you listening right now should object at all to signing Chase Young to a one-year prove-it deal, especially whenever we learned the terms of that deal. When we heard $13 million guaranteed, it looked a lot like the deal Marcus Davenport got from Minnesota a year ago, but now that we learned so much of that salary is tied into roster bonuses, meaning just being active on game day, it's like, okay, well, if he gets injured and he's not there, then then you're good. But either way, that's... I mean, that's OPM, y'all. That's other people's money. I'm not worried about where Gail Benson spends her money. I'm more worried about the strategy of how you manage this against the cap. So, fine. One-year proven deal, Chase Young, former number two overall pick. He was, Y'all, do you remember? Chase Young was the NFL. It was the defensive rookie of the year. He had double-digit TFLs and seven and a half sacks as a rookie. Like, when he has been healthy, he's been good. The problem is being healthy. So then there's the neck thing, right? So we're all like, all right, well, he's coming off the knee, be motivated, healthy, prove it, one-year deal. And then we learn about the neck when it really just soured, I think, everybody's opinion on this. Well, here was Dennis Allen for the first time addressing the team signing Chase Young despite knowing he needs neck surgery. We knew that, you know, he was going to have this surgery. 
And I think the good thing for, for all of us involved was everybody that we talked to felt like, look, it's not a matter of if he's going to heal and be fine. Uh, it was just a matter of when. And so, you know, I think we're kind of comfortable with the timelines that we have. And yet, you know, it's a human body. It's going to heal at its own rate. But I know he's going to do everything he can to get himself back and get himself ready as quickly as possible. The When I think of, like, prominent NFL players that have had neck injuries, I number the first one that always comes to mind for me is Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, you remember, had that spinal fusion. His neck, it, I mean, it cost him a year of his career. That's why they ended up effectively like tanking and drafting Andrew Luck, and then Manning went to Denver. But after that, Peyton Manning won an MVP. He set the NFL record for passing and passing touchdowns in a year in Denver. His first season in Denver there, there in 2013. So Peyton Manning playing the quarterback position came back from a neck injury. Matt Stafford uh, last year, Matthew Stafford, was, you know, they, they toyed with the idea of him having neck surgery. Um Micah Hyde is another guy who had a neck injury and came back from it. So I guess my point is, we've seen players have neck issues and come back from them successfully. So I, I worry less about that. Like if the doctors went through the whole process and they were comfortable and, and signed off, okay. Now it's more about how long will it take Chase Young to be up to speed, full speed, football speed, feeling as close to 100% and, you know, really uh, functioning within this Saints defense, a, a new defense, his third team in less than two years. I mean, remember, he was traded midway through last year from Washington to San Francisco. Now he's in New Orleans. But this would be his third team in less than two years. So really, in a, his third team in a calendar year. So it's it's there's a lot of challenges there, certainly. Now, on the other side, I think it's interesting – with Isaiah Foskey. Because if Foskey, who was the second round pick a year ago, if Foskey had blossomed and, and shown a lot of potential a year ago, then you probably don't need to go sign Chase Young because you feel really good. You got an aging Cam Jordan. You signed Cam, uh, uh, Carl Granderson last year who had a career year, eight and a half sacks. You've still got Tano Passanio. You've got some guys there. You know, Peyton Turner, who who knows what to expect, but he's still on the team. You, The Chase Young signing would have felt a lot less necessary. But Isaiah Foskey had 10 tackles a year ago. I mean, he was effectively uh, a healthy scratch for most of the season. He ended up only playing in 10 out of 17 games. So Dennis Allen was asked about Isaiah Foskey and his sort of uh, what they might expect in year two. I think number one, he's got to cut it loose. I think this last year, you know, was a was a big learning year for him. And so my hope is that he has a great off season. He understands what we're what we're doing defensively. And so he's less concerned about, you know, learning the defense and he's able to just go cut it loose and go play. And I think that's that's what I'm looking to see. Now, it's gonna be a while before we can actually see that happen. You're not seeing it, you know, really as you go through OTAs and minicamp, but I think that's that's just part of the process. But I really want to see him kind of cut it loose. If you want a reason for optimism with Foskey, if you look back at his Notre Dame career. As a freshman at Notre Dame, he only he, he did not have a sack, and he only had five tackles his entire freshman season. Sophomore year, he bumped a four and a half sacks. As a junior, that went to eleven. And remember, he came back for another year because the his second year was the COVID year where they only played ten games. So he had four and a half sacks in the COVID year. Comes back in twenty one as eleven sacks, and then replicates that in twenty two with another eleven sack season. So you saw Foskey as his Notre Dame career went on. Go from flat line to good to boom to, to matching the boom. So that's one thing for a guy that's 6'5", 270, who looks like, who physically looks like the defensive ends, these bigger defensive ends that the Saints like to draft. That learning curve, while it's been steep for him, he's ridden that curve and gotten better. We saw it at Notre Dame, and I'm sure they're hoping for the same things. So you heard DA say it there. He just needs to cut it loose. He's got the ability Maybe this is the year for Foskey. I, it, the good thing is he stayed healthy. If you could stay healthy, um, I think Foskey could be a guy that's a, a key contributor on this defense. And one more from, from Dennis Allen, the defensive side of the ball. Um, 
Can you play number 13, please? This one was was interesting to me because you've got your incumbents back. You've got Demario Davis, who is an all-pro, and Pete Werner, who's, when he's been healthy, has been a starter. But Dennis Allen said Willie Gay is coming here to win a starting job. I think he's a guy that's going to be competing to be a starter on our defense. And so I think that, you know, with, with bringing him on board, you have Willie, you have Demario, you have Pete Warner. Those are three guys that I know played a lot of football in our league and played at a high level in our league. And I think um, that gives us a little bit more depth and it gives us some more options and things that we can do. Um, super athletic guy. Uh, can play the mic. And I think gives you some fantastic depth there. I kind of think back to, if you go back to 2017, 18, when Alex Anzalone was the number three, the rotating in, that's about when you were at your best at that, at that position. And maybe it's something where like, yeah, you'll only truly have two guys listed as starters, but you effectively play three. And I think that's why Willie Gay is coming here thinking he, he can be that. And I'll remind you again, Demario Davis is 35 years old. He'll be 36 by the end of the season. Who knows how much longer he wants to play. Pete Warner's in the last year of his rookie contract, and Willie Gay's on a one-year deal. Your entire linebacker room could turn over after this year. All of it. So this is a great audition for Willie Gay to see if that's a guy you're going to want to sign to a long-term deal after this season. All right. Um, some Saints talk there for you from uh, Dennis Allen again. DA met with reporters at the meetings, uh, at NFL meetings, on Tuesday, we focused so heavily just on Ramchick. I wanted to get through some of the other stuff that he, he talked about. He did also talk about the backup quarterback job, so we'll get to that in just a bit. We're glad you're hanging out with us here. Stick around. We'll go around the SEC. Taylor Calandro, the little bourbon dictionary. That's coming up. It's AFR. AFR. Brought to you by Darren James and Associates, brokered by LPT Realty. Every home listed by every company, all in one place. You know where to find them. Agent225.com. Agent225.com. Been telling you this week that uh, Darren asked me all of this week, to use this time, his live read time, uh, to promote a GoFundMe for a friend and a colleague. Uh, Rob and Melissa Filler, they have a daughter named Gracie, and Gracie has cerebral palsy in her left foot, and it's made walking nearly impossible. Well, there's a, um, a an elective surgery that insurance will only cover a portion of, and this has gives them hope that Gracie could walk again. So... They've set up a GoFundMe for the family. If you'd like to contribute, you can. If you find GoFundMe, her, her name is Gracie Filler, G-R-A-C-I-E. So if you have and are willing and can give anything, um, Darren wanted to make sure we use this time to promote that this week. If you'd like to help the family, Gracie Filler. Think real estate. Think Darren James. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all-you-can-eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. Transfer portals. Fitting to reopen again. Lane Kiffin not happy. Spoke to our guy Neil McCready over at Rebel Grove. Said, quote, it's a really blank system. Um, the word rhymes with um, fitty. Uh, Bitty. Yeah. Gritty. Well, gritty could be with T's or D's. One's True. a dance and one is a, a state of being. Which we'll, one did we'll, you mean? We'll go the state of being. Yes, with T's. Yes. With T's. So that's I what T's. that. Yes, I I G R I T T Y. Yeah. If you just put sh in the front mm -hmm. instead of grr, that's what Lane said. It's a real blank system. It is. Now we're going to utilize it, just like the players do. I'm not mad at the players. They utilize the system. We're going to utilize it and make the best roster we can. Went on. Here again, it's a really stupid system. Hey, it's good for the players, maybe. It's good for them financially, but I'm not really sure it's good for them that they can leave anytime something goes wrong. They're just going to run no matter what. Blah, 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 blah. And then Lane went on to give an example. Quote, maybe it just happened with a high-profile player. I'm going to go somewhere in January, going to get their money. I'm going to have never played it down and transfer. I'm going to go right back in after spring ball. 
go somewhere else, get their money. So, I mean, you could say, yeah, good for the players, but is it? End quote. I mean, I think that's good for the players, right? Would you like to get that money, Muse? Give money somebody? Leave, go get some money for somebody else? I would like to do that, yes. really good. It's a good idea. I mean, <laughs> getting paid twice? Yeah. It's better than once. Get paid every year? Why not? So Lane went on to say, and I quote, this is the last quote, I promise. I'd love to play the audio, but it was a, it was a print article. There isn't, there isn't audio. Actually, I probably could have asked. I should have called Neil. I bet he's got it on like his phone. Probably recorded the interview on his phone. Probably should have asked Neil. Anyway, um, quote, Lane Kiffin, quote, you've created a system where you can just go get money basically at the end of every semester, switching spots as many times as you want. That's not good. End quote, Lane Kiffin. I mean... He's got a point. Like, it's not like coaches would ever do that. It's not like, like, hypothetically. Hi- hypothetically. L- like, let's say a coach was at, I don't know, like, um, pick a school. Like, let's say a coach at Tennessee. Big school, right? Big school. A lot of budget. A lot of history, resources, stuff like that. Like, let's say a coach is at Tennessee, and after, like, one year. Just after one year, he's like, he gets an offer from a an even bigger program. Like, uh... What's, I mean, it would be bigger than tennis. Like, uh, USC. Let's say that, hypothetically. Like, let's say a coach was at Tennessee for one year, recruited players there, got the fans all excited, and won some games, and then, like, USC came calling in the middle of the night. He just left and went there instead. Like, that never happens, does it? So, I mean, certainly that shouldn't happen for the players because – Coaches would never do that, right? Bro, the hypocrisy of these coaches is stunning to me. Lane Kiffin. I, I think I think Lane Kiffin's funny. All this stuff. Great, great coach. Offense. Shut up. Shut your mouth. Like, if he were standing, people say, oh, you say that on the radio. You wouldn't say it to his face. I wish Lane Kiffin was standing in this studio right now so I could say to him, shut your mouth. Like, brother, you spent one year at Tennessee and you up and left all those dudes you recruited. All the living rooms you sat in, parents you promised, you'd watch after their kids, talked about how you'd use them, you got them. And that was before they had any recourse to leave. You got them there and left them high and dry. What? Like, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, brother. You did this, and now you're going to crack on kids for doing it? Oh, it's not good for them. Oh, really? It's good for an adult human who actually has a contract signed who is responsible for and beholden to an entire roster of 85 scholarship players and, by the way, all the other coaches on your staff that you recruited to be there with you and that now, what, do they have jobs? Are they up in the air? Are their families moving, taking their kids out of school? Why? Because you didn't live up to your contract and now here you stand cracking on a system that lets kids do the exact same damn thing you did? Brother, what a hypocrite, man. All these coaches, I've told you, I've said this a million times. I've, if I said this once, I've said it a million times. The only people in the world, the only people in the world inconvenienced by NIL and the transfer portal are millionaire coaches. And forgive me, but I don't have one darn bit of sympathy for millionaire coaches that their life is inconvenienced a bit more about how they're going to put a roster together. Adapt or get out. But you, but you sure as hell better not sit there and be the type of hypocrite Lane Kiffin is who did the same thing to every player he recruited to Tennessee. Let's go around the SEC. Lane Kiffin. Around the SEC, bringing you the biggest news from the nation's best conference, the Auburn Tigers. Auburn guard KD Johnson is entering the transfer portal. Joined Auburn as a transfer after his freshman year at Georgia. First year with the Tigers, started 31 games, scored 12 points per. Over the next two years, playing time decreased. He'll have one year remaining as a grad transfer. The Florida Gators. Former four-star wing Riley Kugel 
He's entering the transfer portal as well. 6'5", Orlando native. He was preseason all-second team SEC, or all-SEC second team, I should say. Start, excuse me, started the first 11 games of the season and then went to the bench for the remainder of the year. Uh, Kugel finishes his second season with the Gators. Nine points, three boards per. The South Carolina Gamecocks. Guard Abrima Deba has entered the transfer portal as a grad transfer. Spent the previous two seasons with the Gamecocks. One year of eligibility remaining. First year in, in uh, Columbia. Suffered a torn ACL. And then he came back this year. Played in just six games. Uh, he's the second player to leave. Michi Johnson was the first. The Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky got a commitment from an offensive tackle. Tucker Caddis, 6'5", 285. His older brother will actually join the Wildcats as well as a walk-on. Uh, he announced in January. He's the number 68 offensive tackle in the country. Committed to uh, Kentucky over Arkansas, Boston College, Michigan, Virginia Tech, and Wisconsin. The Vanderbilt Commodores. And a tough break for Andrew Dut- uh, Dutkanich. Out of uh, out of Vanderbilt, he's out for the season after undergoing Tommy John surgery. Originally, originally suffered the injury March 12th. This is tough. He's a sophomore righty. Previously missed most of his freshman season with a hamstring injury. Now, as a draft eligible sophomore, Tommy John, he'll miss all of next year very likely as well. So, does he go pro now? Does he come back? Tough decision for a guy who passed on a lot of money out of high school to go to Vanderbilt, but his season's over with Tommy Jones. Okay, there you have it. That is around the SEC. We're presented by our friends over at Michelle Weighing and Measurement, Michelle.com, Michelle.com, with uh, 17, no, excuse me, with more than 30 offices across 11 different states. Almost cut their whole, uh, lo- their amount of locations in half. 30 locations across 11 different states. It's Michelle Weighing and Measurement. If you weigh or measure something, they sell, service, rent the products you use to weigh and measure. With Michelle, it's all about making you more efficient so you can save money. Like, let's say you're a farmer, you're in agriculture, you have to weigh your crop. Obviously, you do. If your scale is off even a fraction, a fraction of a point, think about how much money that costs you and your yield. It's Michelle Weighing and Measurement. Of course, they can calibrate your precision measurement devices. Michelle Weighing and Measurement, Michelle.com, Michelle.com. Okay, it's after further review, y'all. Our hump day shows are brought to you by Pluckers. We'll do some Pluckers trivia in hour number three. Look for a place to watch sports. A place of trivia when Pluckers gift cards. You do that tonight, 730 Blue Bonnet, 8 o'clock Nicholson. We'll knock out a quick break. Come back, Taylor Calandro will be here. Get your booze questions in, y'all. If you got them, you can email us, tweet us, text us in the 225, 396-4400, 396-4400, 396-4400. Lots of ways you can get involved in the show. Bourbon Dictionary, Taylor Calandro, next. AFR. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. They're the gang with the slang. This is Bourbon Dictionary with Matt Moscona and Taylor Calandro. All right, wrapping up hour number one. Taylor Calandro is with us. Wine and Spirits Director from Calandro's. Get your booze questions in. Email us, tweet us, text us in the 225-396-4400-396-4400. How are you, dude? I'm doing well, Matt. How are you? Awesome. What's new? Um, We just got the... um. The hundred. Well, I don't know if you know, but this year is the hundred and fiftieth year of the Kentucky Derby. Yes. Um, we just got the hundred and fiftieth anniversary bottles of Woodford Reserve. They're sixty bucks. Uh, they're really nice too. They have like a design on the label that looks like a horse, but it's with uh, roses. It's really uh, nice. It, it is. Uh, I'm pulling it up here so Paul can show our uh, our listeners that are or our, our listeners that are, are watching. Um, it really is a, a beautiful bottle. Is the juice any different, or is it just Woodford in a fancy bottle? It's just Woodford in a fancy bottle, but, but Woodford is the um, official bourbon of the Kentucky Derby, and they do one of these every year. I think last year was Secretariat, actually. It was a cool bottle, too. But they do one of these every year, and, and a lot of people collect them. So, mm. um, 
Yeah, we get asked for it a lot this time of year. And generally, like everything, they sell out long before the Derby. So um, just letting everybody know that the Derby is a little over a month from now. So. Yeah, I've seen like the one, it's it's uh, it's just the label's different, right? The, the Kentucky Derby, yeah. Woodford, that they do. It's just, and it's, I mean, there's horses on it. I, I, I've seen them before, but there's nothing different with the... Uh, with the wood for the juice in the box. No, it's just okay. the collectability aspect of. It. Well, like I said, cool. a lot of people do that. So, are you expecting to like? So you said you you have it. Are you expecting it that it'll go quickly? No, I currently have it. But what I'm saying is, generally on an annual basis, it sells out a few weeks before the Derby starts. So, um, if Pretty if cool. you want it, I would not wait until May. Pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's get to questions. Uh, I, Craig sent one that said, ask Taylor, y'all got any of the delicious Jepson's Malor? I don't even know what that is. What is that? Jepson's Malor. Um, are you a Cubs fan? No. Who's the, I thought one of y'all was Hunt. a Cubs fan. Hunt and, and Jimmy Ott. Hunt, Hunt is a Cubs fan. Right, you're a Yankee fan. Correct. No, um, um, Malor is like the national liquor liqueur of Chicago. It's absolutely disgusting. It's terrible. <laughs> Wait, I think I um, had this. I think I had this at Oliver Twist once. Because like I a heard, black and yellow, yeah, red yes, label. Yeah, <laughs> it's so it's gross. terrible. But it's it, it's a Chicago thing, and I don't really know the history behind it. Um, what's the question? I, it's terrible. Like, yeah, I, is, is that the question? Yeah, it was like, do you have any of that delicious? <laughs> so it was it was a joke. So actually, one of the times we were at Oliver Twist for scone and tea, um, the guys over at Oliver Twist pranked t-bob they tried to tell him like no they, they were i'm sorry they were doing it to me they were trying to tell me oh this is this delicious rare thing or whatever and i, I sipped it i'm like this tastes like like the bottom oh. of a shoe it's awful anyway man it's one of those things like i'm sure people like from chicago i'm just gonna use chicago but they think we're disgusting for eating crawfish i think they're disgusting for drinking that fair enough it's gross uh jay said i got these prices from a source in destin um Elmer T. Lee for 160 four E.H. Taylor uh, single barrels, $135. Stag Jr., 140 Blanton's Gold, 160 That doesn't look terrible. What do you think? I mean, they're... They're marked they're up. They're high, for sure. Yeah. Um, they're, they're high. So, some of them are better than the others, um, but they're a little high. But if you want to spend the money, spend yeah. the money. They're, they're, they're not completely astronomical yeah. to where I would be like, ooh, gross. Taylor single barrel for one thirty five isn't a terrible. That's not a terrible price. That's probably double it's, retail. It's not terrible. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's the way of retail. But God, I love that bottle, so I yeah. would definitely buy that. Uh, Adrian sure. Bailey. No, I'm sorry. That was a uh, that was a football question. Sorry. Uh, Scott said, "Ask Taylor, what's your favorite Weller?" Um, my favorite Weller um, is generally William Larue. Okay, you um, can't count a BTAC. So of the of the others. Of the others, I love CYPB. Um, closely followed by a really good foolproof store pick, probably. I uh, I would agree with you on foolproof. The uh, you know Weller Twelve is is my favorite. I think foolproof would be a, a close second. I had someone tell me that uh, Old Weller Antique was dramatically better than Weller Twelve, and I guess that just means everybody's palates are different because I I think Old Weller Antique might. They're all fantastic, but that might be my least favorite. That's the red label. I mean, label. yeah, everybody's palate. Everybody's palate. Totally different. Different. That's yeah. what makes my job fairly difficult yeah. sometimes. Uh, Sean said, what's the best drink for a draft party, especially you got three Tigers going in the first round? Um, What draft? Oh, the NFL, NFL draft. draft. What, what, what draft is he talking about? Um, When is the draft, Matt? Next month. Next month. Yeah, end of next month. Um, Something springy. How about blackberry crown and lemonade? <laughs> blackberry. That was the conversation last week. Are people still asking you for blackberry crown? Uh, dude, it's, it's it's ridiculous. Wow, I'm stunned it's by this. It, it, the momentum is insane. Where did this. it come? Where did this come from? I mean, out of nowhere. It's stunning. Uh, Multi million dollar marketing I suppose, campaign. I suppose so. <laughs> Uh, we're less than thirty seconds. Uh, Jeff said I had some pecan pie liqueur from Backwoods. Delicious. Have you ever had it? Oh, it is fantastic. Okay, yeah, good. actually, that used to be a Mockler product. I don't know if they still carry that, but yes, it is fantastic. It tastes just like it sounds. He is Taylor Calandro, Wine and Spirits Director over at Calandro's. Thank you, dude. I'll see you, Matt. All right. Uh, Gio Paez, LSU transfer commitment from Wisconsin. He joins us coming up right after Sports Center. Don't go anywhere. 
AFR.